25 summers. If you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the page. So, you was telling me some more stories, man, about incidents with you with the Cubans, man. What's up? What's up with you with the Cubans? Yeah, these motherfuckers here, man. Let me let me let me give you a little history on them first before I break down these savage niggas here, right? Um, 1995, I was in a uh, Greenhaven Correctional Facility. I was working in the gym. I was considered a gym porter where the weights and everything, the basketballs and everything was at, man. My job every day was to get up, go down to the gym, get the equipment ready for the prisoners that's going to come during the day. Before I get back into this story, about the and we're going to go back there, but let me give you a little history on these savage motherfuckers that came over here. In 1983, 82, there was a riot in and, and Cuban prison. Fidel Castro was the uh, president of Cuba. At the time, he exiled 300 inmates, not just from the penitentiary, but he kicked them out of the country in totality. They exiled them. They made their way to Miami and New York City with between November of 82 and March of 83. By the time uh, November of 83 came, all of those dudes found themselves on Rikers Island, man. They bought the same savage mentality, the same ruthless bought those shit. They bought, they bought a penitentiary. Now, back to this Green Haven thing. 1995, as I said, I was working as a porter, and my job was to get the equipment ready. My first encounter with one of these savage motherfucking uh, Cuban dudes is he came into the gym, and he tried to act like he was bigger than life. He wanted to use a certain type of equipment in this dealing with the arm bar told him that we didn't have no arm bars. First of all, this motherfucker couldn't really even talk English. He had a bad accent, man, like Cuba. If you remember Scarface, he had one of them fucked up accents like that. When I told him there wasn't none there, man, he must have took this as a disrespect. And he started giving me the looks and popping a lot of Cuban shit in Spanish and all of that. So I was like, the hell with this dude, man, because, you know, this, this, these dudes is dissatisfied, man. They coming up in here. And there was only two of them in the jail at the whole time. This dude took what I told him, man, and flipped this shit all up and made it seem like I threatened him and got at him on some gangster aggressive shit like that. So about three days later, man, on the walkway, man, this dude ran down on me, man, and I wasn't ready for it, man, but he caught me, man, you know, with no questions asked. No, yo, you remember this incident we had? You remember the shit you was talking? You remember whatever it was, he didn't bring up none of that. He just pulled his knife out, man, and tried to tear my ass up, man, on the walkway. He hit me one time, but it wasn't bad. The second one, it missed. I got up out of there and got away because I got to prepare because I'm going to war with these niggas now, right? Greenhaven is a lot more open than a lot of the other penitentiaries, so you can get away with shit in Greenhaven, and the cops don't be nowhere around, the COs don't be around to see this shit go down. So it'll be a bunch of stabbings and cuttings that the police never know who did it. It'll be the inmates that be snitching because they on some faggot shit, and they trying to get out the penitentiary. I was just the opposite. What I did was that I, I bought myself some time because I'm going to tear this motherfucking savage up. See, he might be a savage from the jungle over there, but we know the ways of the penitentiary. A lot of black brothers, man, were afraid of these Hispanics, man, because they was knife-wielding dudes. All they do is fight with knives. They didn't fight with their hands. The black brother was used to another brother coming at him and throwing the hands up and getting it over with popping like that. He wasn't used to somebody pulling a knife out and sticking his ass, and then he bleeding all over the place. Once they seen the blood, they froze. Shot got the ass tore up, and that was the end of it. Yeah, but there's an exception. There's a few black brothers and me, myself, that didn't care nothing about no knife wielding dude from the jungle and all of that, man. We had ways to deal with them jungle motherfuckers, man. We'd tear their ass up, too. It's whoever jumped first. This dude hit me, and it didn't It didn't, it didn't really hurt nothing none of that. But then I end up making a long story short. I end up getting this motherfucker back, right? Now, my way of getting him back, man, is no rules of the game. All that shit is out the window. He rolled on me, man, for some shit that he got misunderstood because his non-speaking English ass don't speak no English. So what it was is he took in some racist shit with me and he got on it like that. That was my first encounter with him. I tore his ass up. But then, like I told you once before, 
these dudes stick together. And they from a small, tight-knit community. Like, all three of these 100 motherfuckers came over here because they got kicked out of the country. Why do you think they got kicked out of the country? You hear about a motherfucker getting kicked out of school. You hear about a motherfucker getting kicked off the job. But you never really hear about a motherfucker getting kicked out the country. So these got to be some rad, ruthless dudes, right? And I had a few altercations with them. That Green Haven thing was... I ended up going to the box for like eight months, man, because I tore this dude ass up, man. He never even seen me coming, man, up the stairs, man. And I let him have it with the with the with the trick of his trade, man, that night. Once I let him have that, man, I sent his ass out of there. But now the word gonna get around. Is some black dude done stabbed one of our Cubans up. And it might be only about ten or twenty of them in the whole state. But you could rest and bet your last dollar, man. They're going to find out. They're going to get wind of you, man. You're going to have a problem. So anywhere you go from that point on, and you done tore one of them crazy-ass Cubans up, you might as well air out off the gate, man. Whenever you get to Auburn, Clinton, Comstock, Elmira, Shawonga, Kasaki, Greenhaven, wherever, and you run into one of them dudes, man, tear his ass out the frame because nine times out of ten, he going to already know who you is. They gonna line you up, and when they hit you, they like to blow your lung out. They like to, you have to have tubes all in your ass. They like to give you with a caustic bag, a shit bag. They like hitting you in the kidneys. They like tearing your midsection up all around the head. They don't go as far as trying to hit you in the heart and kill you, cause they know that they ain't never getting out the penitentiary. But these dudes are very precise with these knives, with placing hits and hitting you on your body where it render you. Out of commission, man. You just tore up, man. So you got to watch out for these dudes. Okay, you mentioned something about, you know, even though there's not a lot of them, no matter what prison you go to, you know that you're going to run into them because you stab one of their own. Is it is it like that with all races of people and all gangs, or is it just, you know, isolated to the Cubans are like this, or is it like with everybody? If you do something to, I don't know, a Latin king and go right. somewhere else, do you still have to watch out? Or is it just like that with the Cubans? That's what I'm getting. It's at. more like that with the Cubans. I'm going to explain to you why. Because yeah. in all of our other organizations, like you mentioned, the Latin kings, you got the five percenters, you got the Muslims, you got these dudes. There's a lot of pussy niggas in these ranks. There's a lot of pussy scared niggas hiding behind the color and hiding behind what they represent. So they're not really going to take it to the next level and carry out a mission in the next jail and the next jail. Some do, and some dogs do, but some don't. But when you're dealing with these savage Cuban motherfuckers, these dudes are really not punks, man. These niggas is not faggots, man. They're not punks. I mean, you know, whatever. They, 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 mess, with, they mess with chumps. They mess with mooks. And all of that. That's what they do in their country and all that. But they're not soft by law slide, man. I mean, they get busy. They fight. They fight with their hands. They fight with knives. So more so with them, these dudes is more real with this shit. As far as revenging, stabbing somebody, lining them up, rocking them to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Putting the baby in the crib. And, you know, they, they into that. They specialize in that. When you got these other organizations like these Nietas and these Kings and these Monchadellos and these Rat Hunters, there's a lot of pussy motherfuckers in their organization. There's a lot of dope-driven dudes in their organization, drug-driven dudes. So they're not going to go to Auburn, to Clinton, and hit another dude because he did something in Elmira. They don't usually be doing that, you know, unless they ordered to do it by one of their superiors, you know. So they don't take things by themselves. They follow a lot of orders, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And the Cubans are different. They don't have no gang. They're not coming in as a gang with a name on them. They're just coming in there as a Cuban dude, and all Cubans stick together, bottom line.